Have you joined the family rosary where the one leading the prayer would pause after announcing the mystery? What exactly happens in those 3 to 4 seconds of silence? In this video, I will give you a visual explanation of what could be happening in those pauses. Hi, I'm Avik, and if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Click the link below, subscribe, like, and share. Well, during this COVID pandemic lockdown, you might be praying the rosary as a family. And perhaps you are looking for another way to explain to your kids the rationale for pausing at the start of a decade. Well, I tell you that pausing in silence is actually a practical application of the contemplative praying of the rosary. St. John Paul II wrote a lovely letter on this in 2002, and I will put the link in the description below. Well, you might ask, isn't the rosary a vocal prayer? Yes, the words take center stage in the rosary. But it is not only a vocal prayer, it is also a meditation, a contemplation of the Christian mysteries. So let us try to visualize this contemplation. I have this audio track which I got from YouTube in the recitation of the Rosary in Teresidad. I put the link below. Actually, just looking at the Rere Do Teresidad will make you already contemplate. In parentheses, I've been there twice for my retreat some years back. So if you are not in a church and you could be in a park or in your living room, you can really make use of your imagination recalling a still image or a movie or even a page in the Bible which the Rosary Mystery speaks about. For example, in the first luminous mystery on the baptism of our Lord in the Jordan, to contemplate it is simply to remember the scene using a painting like this one, or perhaps you have recently seen the movie Jesus of Nazareth by Seferelli, and this is a particular scene that you can think about. So whatever source you have, the pause is a moment to focus your attention to the scene. This is easy because Jesus was really man. He took on our human features. He was a visible God when he was here on earth. Using the second luminous mystery on the wedding feast at Cana, I demonstrate another way to contemplate which many saints have suggested. That is to put yourself in the scene by imagining yourself as one more person there. So here I remember the scene where Mary told the servants, do as he tells you, and I can imagine myself as one more obedient servant. I find that doing it this way makes the gospel more true to my life rather than a first century account that I cannot relate to. Using the third luminous mystery, the proclamation of the kingdom of God, I could recall quickly what the gospel said about our Lord preaching and forgiving sins, and that scandalized the Pharisees as only God could forgive sins, and I end the contemplation trusting more in God who forgives. Then we go to the fourth luminous mystery, and here we contemplate our Lord being transfigured, and we could end with an aspiration from St. Peter himself, Master, it is good for us to be here, to have witnessed this event. You can keep this aspiration as the same every time you contemplate the fourth luminous mystery or you can change it after some time. It does not really matter, I am just showing one way. And lastly, the contemplation does not have to end with a verbal aspiration. It does not need to end with words as in my previous example. It can stay in the heart as I depict in this fifth mystery of the institution of the Eucharist where we see our Lord in the Last Supper and we can thank Him with all our heart for giving us the privilege to receive Him in Holy Communion and to visit Him in the Blessed Sacrament. I hope that this clarified what we can be doing during the process. So that's all for today. Stay home, keep safe, keep helping many people, and keep praying. See you in the next video.